and those are scheduled to start around the T plus 54 minute mark, and that will conclude just about two and a half hours after liftoff. Now we do expect to have telemetry for all but five of those deployments, and we will light our MVAC engine for a total of four times over the course of this mission. If you are interested, a full list of payloads are available on SpaceX.com. Stage one, everyone, load complete. Now we are currently working towards a T0 of 2.05 p.m. Pacific time, which is just about six minutes from now. Weather is green and the range is ready to support. If for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. The Falcon 9 rocket supporting today's mission is a two-stage rocket. It's designed for reliable and safe transportation of satellites, cargo, and even people into space. At the very top of the rocket is the payload fairing. The fairing is a protective shell that houses all of the spacecraft, shielding them from aerodynamic heating and mechanical stress until the vehicle is outside of the Earth's atmosphere. The aerodynamic shape of the fairing also contributes to Falcon 9's overall efficiency, helping to reduce drag while the vehicle accelerates through the Earth's atmosphere. And once in space, those two fairing halves will separate to expose the payloads to the vacuum of space. The fairing halves will then fall back down to Earth, where they are recovered by SpaceX to be refurbished and reused on a future flight. And right below the fairing, we do have our second stage, which houses the single Merlin vent vacuum engine, or MVAC. And that's the engine Thanks that will take... For that's the engine that will take our payloads to their drop-off point in space. Below that second stage is the black carbon fiber interstage, where the MVAC engine is located. The interstage connects the two stages and houses the center pusher, and that allows the first and second stages to separate during flight. Just below that interstage is the first stage, which we usually refer to as the booster. The first stage makes up the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle, and it has nine M1D engines at the bottom. Those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get the rocket off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere, and they generate more than 1.7 million pounds of thrust. And at just about two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth, and we will be attempting to land at LZ4, which you see there on your screen now. And that landing zone is not too far from the launch pad. And as I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, this is the fifth flight for this rocket. This mission also marks the, 200 marks the 250th time that a flight-proven booster will be used on a Falcon mission. And if successful, this landing will mark SpaceX's 280th landing of an orbital-class rocket. SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbit per year. We do also offer opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, and those launch about once per week. Our goal with these missions is to provide small satellite operators competitive pricing, increased flight opportunities, and flexibility. And on today's mission, we're flying, flying many exciting payloads, from one that will one day help address the issue of space debris, to in-space surveillance and reconnaissance support, Earth imaging and emissions tracking, and several payloads intended to demonstrate and grow in-space technologies. Now, as the demand for rideshare missions continues to rise, our rideshare program was Stage expanded. One lock load complete. And that program was expanded to accommodate even more small sats looking for rides to orbit. Later this year, Falcon 9 will launch the first bandwagon mission, which is a separate line of rideshare missions, and those will deliver spacecraft to a mid inclination orbit rather than to transporters' sun synchronous orbit. Rideshares significantly increase accessibility to space for small satellite operators around the world. And we're super excited to be able to offer these opportunities for our customers. Now, coming up next in just around 30 seconds, we should be wrapping up locks loading on the second stage. Teams began loading propellant on the vehicle at around T minus 35 minutes. It typically takes just around 33 minutes to load about a million pounds of liquid oxygen and RP1 into the vehicle. Stage two, lock load complete. And there we go. We just had confirmation of stage two, locks load completion. And with that, the vehicle is now fully loaded with liquid oxygen and RP-1. 
And right now on your screen, you can see that white cloud venting from the TE locks line. This is a completely normal part of the closeout process. Ground gas closeout. The next milestone coming up ahead of launch is startup, and this occurs at T minus one minute. This is the point at which the vehicle's onboard flight computers will take control of the countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. Great news there, folks. Falcon 9 has just entered the startup state. We're just waiting on our final go from our launch director, or LD. LD is go for launch. And there's that go for launch from our launch director. So with that, all systems are go for Falcon 9's launch, launch of the Transporter 10 mission. T minus 30 seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And lift off Falcon 9. Go SpaceX, go Transporter 10. Vehicle is pushing downrange. Downloading MOD team of pressures. T plus 30 seconds into flight, Falcon 9 has cleared the tower at Space Launch Complex 4 East. We're just coming back up on the point of throttling down to prepare for max Q, which is the point of maximum aerodynamic stresses on the vehicle. You can see Power some, telemetry nominal. You can see some great views of the California coast down there below. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. And there we go. We just passed through the point of Max Q, which means we have throttled the M1D engines back up. And coming up next, we do have five events, starting with MECO, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and then the beginning of boost back burn. Today's mission is what we refer to as a return to launch site mission. And that means that the first stage will flip around and point back towards, towards the launch site where it took off from. And it will perform a boost back burn. Should be coming up on main engine cutoff in around 30 seconds. Getting a great tracking shot of the vehicle from the ground here. Miko? Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. Wow, beautiful views here. You just heard and saw. All those five events that happened back to back, including main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, and the beginning of boost back burn. On the left side of your screen there, you see the first stage performing its boost back burn, heading towards the launch site. And on the right is the MVAC engine continuing to accelerate our payloads into orbit. Fairing separation confirmed. And there go those two fairing halves. You can now see all of our payloads exposed to the vacuum of space. 
We should be wrapping up the boost back burn on the first stage in just around 10 seconds. Stage one boost back shut down. There we go. We just had confirmation of the end of boost back burn. The next major milestone coming up is the entry burn on our first stage, and that's scheduled to occur around the T plus six minute mark. Now on the right side of your screen, we're currently in the first of four MVAC burns, and this burn should last for another four minutes or so. And as I mentioned, the next milestone will be the first stage's entry burn coming up in just a couple minutes. For those of you who are unfamiliar, Falcon 9 performs two burns in order to land. The first burn of the two is the entry burn, and that slows the vehicle down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. And without this burn, we'd only be using the atmospheric drag to slow the vehicle down, which would add a significant amount of stress on the rocket. So for today's mission, a single Merlin 1D engine will relight for this entry burn. And following that entry burn, the booster will go through the final burn, which is the landing burn, and that'll slow the vehicle down just enough to make a soft landing on our landing pad. You can see there on the left side of your screen a view of the booster. Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins, and those are positioned near the top of the first stage. And these help, st help steer the vehicle as it returns to Earth. Wow, on the left side of your screen, you can see a great ground tracking shot of the first stage. Those white puffs coming off Falcon 9 are... Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Those are cold nitrogen gas, which help with our attitude control. And this is just making small adjustments to the vehicle as it heads back towards the landing zone. On the right side of your screen, MVAC is continuing to burn towards orbit. Currently traveling over 11,000 kilometers per hour. Again, coming up on that entry burn on the first stage in around 30 seconds. The entry burn will slow the vehicle down, so pay attention to that telemetry in the bottom left side of your screen. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that startup of the entry burn. This burn should last just around 20 seconds. We can see the vehicle rapidly decelerating now. Stage one entry burn shut down. And there we go. That concludes our entry burn. The first stage has one more burn left prior to landing. And again, as I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover this booster for the fifth time Stage today. Stage one FTS is saved. The Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber and aluminum honeycomb. Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. We should see those Stage legs deploy just on. prior to landing. On the left, you can see a tracking shot of the first stage, and on the right, you can see the onboard cameras looking down towards the ground. Should be starting up that landing stage burn any landing second. Burn. I like to play. Stage one landing confirmed. Wow, what a view of that landing, folks. As you just saw and probably heard, we did just successfully land the first stage back at landing zone four. So that stage marks the fifth internal guidance. That marks the fifth landing for this specific booster. It also marks SpaceX's 280th landing of an orbital class rocket. Next milestone coming up in just around 15 seconds should be the shutdown of our second stage engine, the MVAC.
and back shut down. Nominal parking orbit. And there we go. We just had confirmation of successful MVAC shutdown and a nominal parking orbit insertion. Coming up next, we do have the second burn of our MVAC engine. H2 FTS is saved. That second burn should start around the T plus 50 minute mark. So we'll be back here in just about 40 minutes to bring you live coverage of second engine start two. Following that shortly will be the beginning of our payload deployments. So until then, enjoy the space views and we'll see you soon.